So how do we define a random walk is defined as a process where the current value of the variable is composed of the past value plus an error term. Okay, so there are two important things in a random walk uh, series. You have the past value term and the error term, nothing more than that. See, so yt is the current value, it's just the past value plus an error term at. Okay. Um, so this is typically also known as white noise. Okay. Um, where you have zero mean and variance of uh, one. Uh, okay, so in such a case, you will not be able to use time series. Okay, for white noise, there's no point using time series. There's nothing can be done uh, for time, uh, in a white noise series. Okay, so just avoid uh, using anything for for you know such process. So how do we uh, let's say and, and what's the motivation behind understanding random walk process? Well, when you have a time series data and you you, you find out that um, it's it's following a random walk process, then you stop there. Okay, so that's basically a check that one need to do, one needs to do uh, before even going for other forecasting uh, using other forecasting techniques. Okay, so if you plot a random walk process, it looks something like this. Okay. It looks very weird. There's no trend at all. There's no pattern. So basically what random walk means is that there is no pattern in the data. There's no pattern in the data. It's just, you know, pure random. Okay. And there's nothing in the data that you can use uh, for forecasting your future. Something similar. Okay. So this is also a rand typical random work process. Okay. Uh, okay. So random work process can be closely related to the behavior of stock market. Stock market also many a times, you know, uh, information in the past values, you know, uh, although many people will say that, you know, forecasting stock price or return is very much possible, but that's not always the, always the thing. Uh, stock market many a times uh, behaves purely as a random work. Sometimes it has some pattern, but many a times it, it, it has no pattern in it. It's also used in in understanding Brownian motion in, in many uh, science and uh, science areas, also in finance. A movement of a drunken man, somebody who's drunk, you will have no pattern. If you and if you try to understand or study his pattern of walking, there's no pattern at all. Okay, so it's also a limiting process of an AR1 process. So AR1 process is just yt equal to y sorry yt equal to phi y minus t plus at right so this is an ar1 process so when phi equal to 1 you take a random mode process okay if phi is less than 1 you have the ar1 okay so this is a typical condition for ar1 so random work is basically the special case of ar1 where you cannot uh, go ahead in building a forecasting model so, so what the implication, what is the understanding or the takeaway point? The takeaway point here is that the implication of process of this type is that the best prediction of y for next period is the current value. Okay. Now, if you have a time series data uh, and that follows random work, uh, just stop there. Don't have to do anything. Uh, so, you all need to uh, convey or uh, you need to communicate to uh, to the audience is that the best prediction for this particular time series for future is nothing but the current value. There's nothing that can, nothing more can be done uh, other than that. Okay. It can be shown that the mean of a random work process is constant, but the variance is not. Okay. So mean of the random work, in many situations it can be constant, but variance is never the case. And that's why random work is a typical case of a non-stationary series. But many non-stationary series can be made stationary and you can, you know, you know, do forecasting for future, except in the random work process. That's uh, where the difficulty is. Okay. Sometimes um, you could have a deterministic component to random work also. And we call that again as a drift. Okay. You have a constant term to it okay so instead of just yt equal to yt minus 1 plus the uh, error term you could also have 
something like theta okay theta naught you can add just the uh, drift okay so this is the uh, deterministic term and this is the stochastic term okay so it will be partially deterministic and partially uh, stochastic in this case so you know it doesn't start from zero right it starts somewhere here so that's the drift so this is the theta naught and then you know there is no trend at all okay so it has some um, deterministic part and some stochastic part okay. so this is the typical case of random walk with the drift so how do you remove the trend okay from a series a series containing a trend will not revert to long run mean okay so if a series has a, some kind of a trend it is either upward trend or there is a lower lower trend it is never going to let's say come back to the mean okay so this series something that you can't expect but that's what is needed for forecasting right so the usual methods for eliminating trend is detrending and differentiating okay either you detrend or you difference um i'll briefly talk about it not in detail so here is the case of differentiating and how you make uh, something uh, stationary so um okay so if you uh, take a random walk okay so a random walk is yt minus yt minus 1 equal to your uh, error terms okay sorry uh, this is wrong yt equal to yt minus 1 plus your thing right so this is a typical case of random walk here at will be non stationary so in this is case this is a typical non stationary case but if you take a difference of that it is likely to be stationary if you take the first difference it is likely to be uh, you know stationary so this is where we need to understand what is known as an unit root test so the name suggests unit root means we are only talking about how to find out whether the phi that we talked about in the non stationary series is one or not okay so in a, in a stochastic trend series uh, that we have just learned if phi is one then we I'm sure it's a random walk process, and that's what we call it unit root. And we need to statistically test that before getting to know. Um, so when we have a stationary system, uh, you know, we know for sure that the effect of any shock that is going to happen to the uh, uh, the time series will die out gradually. Okay, in a stationary series, if you have a shock, it moves up, it eventually comes down. and then it removes somewhere in the mean and then even if another there is a shock in upward or whether in downward it is if there is downward shock here it will again come back but that's not the case in non stationary system in non stationary system if there is a shock okay if 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 something goes up it never comes down to the mean okay so it never approach the long run mean okay so that's one aspect of uh, you know Uh, a, a non stationary series and from there we can derive a mot uh, we can derive some sort of a clue as to how we can you know find out if there is presence of unit root that means whether the phi is one or or not all right so there are two types of non stationary okay one case where you have the you know this case is just one and the other case is phi is greater than 1 we have we just taken beta just keep changing notations but you know the second case we of course will ignore for here so the first case we would like to see when is the case when we have the phi equal to 1 and that we can get to know using a uh, dicke fuller test okay so this is a test uh using which we can find out whether there is presence of unit root or the time series is uh, unit root or not so unit root is it just you know another way of saying that whether it's it's uh, a random walk series or not all right so the simplest approach is just to have a year year one series okay yt with the theta and you have psi of yt minus 1 okay 
and we would like to know if psi um, is, is sorry is if phi is one or not. Now this is AR one series, right? And we expect phi to be less than one. If it is equal to one, then that's a problem. That's a random box series, right? So the hypothesis testing in the case of a decubulus test is, is like this. The uh, modulus of phi is either 1 or modulus of phi is less than 1, which is the alternative hypothesis. Either this will get accepted or, you know, we'll just, uh, you know, reject null, the null hypothesis, right, depending on what the test set statistic value is. We can refresh this to make it better, right, because, you know, in a t-test, we essentially uh, compare it with the zero or non-zero, right? So we'll make it more simpler. So how you do that? You just subtract the previous time series from it, okay? So we have yt equal to, um, you know, yt is uh, theta, um, theta one, let's say, minus, um, sorry, uh, phi one, uh, yt minus one, sorry. I think we have done something else. Okay. So we have the series yt equal to yt minus uh, 1. This is theta naught plus at. And then what we do is that we simply subtract yt minus 1. So from left and both right, yt minus yt minus 1 equal to uh, theta naught, sorry, phi, uh, so yeah, this is theta, sorry, theta naught plus yt uh, minus 1, uh, which is again psi phi here, minus yt minus 1 plus at, okay. Now, this is uh, just delta t, right? So, delta yt is equal to theta naught plus, here we can take yt out. So, yt, then inside we have 1 minus phi plus at. And then 1 minus 5, we just denote uh, with some uh, other, uh, you know, uh, symbol, okay. So, uh, so this particular term, if it is equal to 0, then we have a unit rule, otherwise not. So, it has now changed, okay. So, null hypothesis is now either it's 0 or it's less than 0, okay. So, just, you know, slight change, you know, here we are comparing with 1. Or less than one here it is you know either it's zero or less than zero there are three types of decubular test we can do uh, i'm not going to the details of it but depending on the kind of random work we are trying to uh, understand we'll have different type of decubular test the first case is a pure random work there is no drift there is no theta theta term here right it just um, the uh, past value of yt okay so we would like to know if the coefficient is zero or not in this case the second case we have a drift okay uh, and in the third case we have a drift and we also have a deterministic time component okay we have theta 1t so time right it's the deterministic trend so it's just a combination of deterministic and stochastic trend okay linear time trend okay so there are three types of decubular test we can do depending on what type of uh, what the intention is I and mean, we can also do uh, all three and see which one is actually uh, is the the best for the given time series data so how do you uh, find a test statistic and how do you do that right? you just apply you know OLS you know you have the equation regression equation you just find uh, we just estimate the parameters so parameters here is is phi right Remember, it's 1 minus 5, you know, we just change it to a different symbol, but, you know, ultimately we are trying to find out what phi is. So, we can find that out using OLS, and then we can find out the T statistics, okay. We can find out the T statistics, and then we see, um, you know, uh, whether it's significant or not, given for a given particular value, okay. So, that's how you will get to know uh, if... A particular time series is uh, is a unit root case or not, and if that is the case, you will be able to find out whether it's it's a typical random work or not. In such a case, you know uh, the limitations of time series methods uh, won't allow you to let's say you know forecast future. You rather take more of a guess 
depending on the past values of, of the time series rather than you know doing some sort of analysis that is uh, you know not going to give any accurate result. So that's one of the you know test important tests that people do before even starting to you know explore other uh, time series models for forecasting and it's, it's quite important early enough if you get to know if a particular time series is random work then you do not go ahead with any of this any of this uh, you know sophisticated methods uh, you will be saving uh, a lot of time uh, in doing in doing that